that was 1965, 66, 67, and we were struggling. And we were struggling because we were in schools and we were being trained. But whatever training we were, get, we were getting, we felt it was not as relevant as it needed to be. You know, the reason why we created Africana Studies, created Black Studies, is so we could have a relevant education, that we could leave the schools, and we could leave these schools and go out into communities and apply this knowledge. We were the ones with the biggest mouths back in the 1960s and the 1970s, saying what y'all teaching is not worth that much of anything. And it's interesting now that we all got in there now, and that we're occupying these positions, that we forgot what we struggled for in the first place. And so early on, early on in this discussion about black intellectual thought and what you need to do with it, I need, you remind, I need to remind you of what Du Bois did and what Du Bois said. And what Du Bois did and what Du Bois said when he first had the opportunity to go work for some black schools, he said, I want to remind you that there's a rift between theory and practice. And this rift is not aiding us in any way to assist the black community. And here we are in 2011, and I want to remind you, there's still a rift between theory and practice. Now, we have different ways of looking at where we are and what we've been able to do. I think in the last three or so decades, the theory of Afrocentricity has grown by leaps and bounds. I comment on this in a number of different articles. I talk about um, the, the work initially of Asante, and I talk about the people who embraced that concept, who embraced that theory and started to expand it. And so there is no shortage of literature. This doesn't mean you can't keep writing. I'm not suggesting that. But there is no shortage of literature explaining Afrocentricity and what Afrocentricity is all about and applications of Afro Afrocentricity to history and Afro, uh, applications of Afrocentricity to literature and et cetera. You know, that's, a lot of that is out there. And I might be one to say, let's compliment ourselves on being successful and theorizing. We theorize now, we got that, we did that. And we're gonna do more of it, and I understand that. But at some point, the question arises, just like it did that first day you went home for those younger people who were able to study Africana studies and get degrees. When you went home and you said to your mom and your dad, I'm getting a degree in Africana studies. And they looked at you and said, what are you gonna do with that? You know, what are you, what are you supposed to do with that? And you went on to explain all the great things you would be able to do. Well, now that we have so much theory, we need to ask ourselves, what you gonna do with that? You got theory, but what you gonna do with that? And if all we gonna do is sit in the academy and theorize about what needs to be done and how we can explain, uh, expand this theory, then what good is it? And this is not to say that it's not good. I'd be the first one to say, I can explain to you how I've used Afrocentri uh, Afrocentricity in all areas of my life. But we need to be able to remind ourselves that the purpose of theorizing in the first place was so we can improve the quality of life of our own people. Right. So we can improve the quality of life of our communities. So we can increase, you know, what the human experience was going to be for people. And so now we need to take a look at that and ask ourselves, how are we going to do that? I think, personally, that every area of the professions, every area of practice, every initiative there is out there to improve the quality of life of black people can benefit by infusion of Afrocentricity. But somebody has to do it. Now my book says that one of the things that I was gonna talk about, and I can only do it quickly because it's so long, I mean this book says, and I, and I do talk about it extensively in my book, Righteous Self-Determination of Black Social Work Movement in America, um, but one of the organizations and one of the groups of professionals who were able to embrace theories like Afrocentricity and Kawaida theory and say, let's do something with this, were the black social workers. Absolutely. And the black social workers did it in a way to benefit not them as professionals, but to benefit the entire community. We need to spread some of that concept of what the black social workers did to the rest of the professions because they cannot be the only ones out there trying to apply Afrocentric theory and practices. And they're not exclusively the only one. We see some of this in education, that's true. And that's a good thing you see it in education. But we also see areas where people are doing things and developing policies and implementing things in our community, and we ask ourselves, do they have a clue as to who we are as a people? And it could be something as simple as housing policy. You know, we develop housing in such a way, I mean, consider this. I was raised in Philadelphia. If people had an Afrocentric understanding of the world, they would never have built high rises, 25 floors, you know, for families to live in so they couldn't have any communication with anybody, you know. But people do things that are convenient. We need people to do things that are going to be useful and going to be helpful. 
There are many, many examples that, that black social workers were able to embrace Afrocentric theory and say, let's take this out to the world. Now, one, they took it out to the community. They took it to after-school programs. They took it to um, um, homes and programs for the elderly. They took it to um, youth programs, juvenile programs, where people were having difficulty just fitting into the world. And they start working with people about, well, the concept basically of people being decentered seems to apply to everything that I'm seeing here. Oh, okay. I thought you would give me some time. Okay. <laughs> of everything, you know, that we're seeing here. And, and, and of course, yes, uh, you know, that was a good thing. But in other areas, people don't seem to be as exposed. And so one of the things that needed to occur is that in addition to taking it out in the world, we had to take it back into our own worlds. We had to raise questions about what was going on in the schools, what were going on in our agencies, the places that employed us. You know, what is it that they were doing to help us integrate this Afrocentric understanding into practice, to change the social practices? And this is where I think we have our biggest struggle not just with those of us who are in the human services. I think with the notion of making certain that educational institutions like higher education embrace this concept and allow it to even be taught is still a fight. And so it's one thing to say you can go and take a class in Africana studies, but when everywhere else you go t still tends to deny the significance of that, you're in trouble. We are in trouble. If you read the paper on Sunday, I read a distressing thing in the New York Times. And the New York Times had a report in there by Southern Poverty Law Center. And they said, this generation is the most ignorant about what happened during the civil rights struggle. Now, you got to add, yeah, it's true. But if, the, if they have no knowledge of the civil rights struggle, they had no knowledge that we struggled, period. And so what we have now is a generation of people who are simply trying to fit in. And they're trying to fit into the mainstream in ways that are not useful to us. And so again, now this says five minutes. Now and again, it raises the question as to what is black intellectual thought right now? What do we do with these theories like Afrocentricity, Kawaii, or whatever, and how do you get those things integrated into what we call social practices? And again, I think that one of the ways in which we have to do that is think about the literature that we're producing, think about the books we're producing, think about what we're theorizing about, and ask ourselves the question, can it be applied?